Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what I have for you here in this video is a nice radical expression. So uh, some of you out there would look at this symbol right here and say, oh, that's a square root symbol, which indeed it is. But in fact, this is what we call a radical in algebra. So if you're studying some sort of math course that involves algebra, you uh, are likely going to study a chapter or unit that says radical expressions, radical equations, and that's what we're talking about in this particular video. So you can see by the title, I'm saying, can you fix this? Because the way this is written is not correct in algebra. And I'll tell you why in a second, but I want to give you a full opportunity for you to simplify this expression. So if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I am going to fully explain this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the answer here. So we have d cubed over the square root of d. What is this uh, equal to? Well, the correct answer is the following, d squared times the square root of d. So this is the proper way to express this radical expression. All right, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, you definitely deserve a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that, yes, indeed, you know how to simplify uh, radical expressions. They'll be very impressed with that information indeed. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just review a more basic problem. So let's take this, 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, we're going to simplify this. So here, uh, this is a good example of, you know, understanding the concept of why this is a problem in algebra. So we're taking a number, like 1, and we're going to divide it by the square root of 3. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, let's kind of go over here and understand this pretty well, all right? So let me just kind of erase this uh, pizza here, or the pizza, excuse me. <laughs> I have pizza in my mind because I'm going to use a pizza as a uh, illustration. So here I have one pizza, <laughs> excuse me, here. So let's say there's four of us. So we're going to take this pizza and we're going to divide it uh, in, uh, by four, right? So we're going to divide this into four slices. So we could divide this up four ways. So here's one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Now this makes sense, right? Now we're dividing this one pizza by what we call a, um, a whole number, right? Or a natural number or a rational number. It makes sense. Yes, I can divide this into four equal parts, no problem. But let's suppose I say, well, let's take this same pizza and let's divide it up by the square root of three. Okay, so how much uh, pizza do we all get if we divide it up by the square root of three? Well, this now becomes a problem conceptually because the square root of three is what we call an irrational number. Okay, this is a decimal that goes on forever and ever. It doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. So the square root of three just goes on and on and on and on. Matter of fact, I don't have a calculator in front of me. Let me see if I can get my calculator real quick. I should have been more prepared, but here we go. So the square root of three, if you went onto your calculator, would be 1.8. 732050. Now, this is what your calculator is giving you, but this is goes on and on and on, and these digits do not repeat. There's no repeating pattern, and it doesn't stop, it doesn't terminate. So, these decimals here, okay, are just an estimation of the square root of three. So, we really don't know what the square root of three is, the actual number, because it goes on infinitely. So, if I said divide this pizza by a number that I would have to write out to infinity, well, conceptually, you know, that's going to make us look a little bit, you know, confused. We're going to be like, well, I don't really understand what's going on, you know, what do you want me to do? So that's why it's a problem. We don't uh, want to leave expressions such that we're dividing by an irrational number. Okay, it's not rational, right? It's an irrational number. 
So we want to fix these um, expressions, and here is a perfect basic example. So we have 1 divided by the square root of 3. How can we fix this up? Well, this is what we call rationalizing the denominator in algebra. So for those of you out there that are taking courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1 or beyond, this is something that you should know how to do. So what we're going to do is take this number, 1 over the square root of 3, and we're going to multiply it by 1. Okay, so what happens when you take any number and you multiply it by 1? So if I have 8 and I multiply it by 1, well, this is what we call an identity. Uh, we're just going to get back to 8. Now, the 1 that we're going to use is going to be a fancy-looking 1. So in this case, we're going to take the denominator, so this is the square root of 3, and we're going to multiply the denominator here by the square root of 3, and we're going to also multiply the numerator by the square root of 3. But if you look here, this is nothing more than a fancy 1, okay? The square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So we're not changing the value of what's going on here. We're just kind of using a little bit of a math trick to rewrite this expression such that it does not have a square root in the denominator. That is the problem. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we just simply now multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times the square root of 3 will be the square root of 3. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be equal to the square root of 9. Remember, when you have two square roots and you're multiplying, you simply multiply what's, uh, what's under the square root. So 3 times 3 is 9. And the square root of 3, I'm uh, sorry, the square root of 9 is 3. So that is our denominator. All right, so now we uh, change this expression, 1 divided by the square root of 3, into this equivalent expression. But this is OK because now we have that irrational number in the numerator. OK, and then we have a lovely whole number down here in the denominator. So again, this is what we call rationalizing the denominator. And this is not like an optional thing. You might be saying, yeah, I just leave my answer this way. If you leave your answer this way, your teacher is likely going to take some points off. And then you're going to be very upset. And you're going to be like, I should have listened to that YouTube guy. Uh, but anyways, just trust me on this stuff. I've been teaching math for decades. It's something that you need to do. All right, so with that uh, you know, uh, knowledge behind us, we could take a look at this expression and be like, well, we don't know what the value of d is because d could be like equal to 9, right? So if d was equal to 9, okay, the square root of 9, of course, would be 3, and this would be no problem. But we can't guarantee that. We don't know what that is. So we need to address this, and we're going to use the same technique. We're going to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply... Uh, both the numerator and denominator by the square root of d, and that's this right here. Okay, so here we have the square root of d. So I'll multiply the denominator by the square root of d and the numerator by the square root of d, and this is nothing more than just a fancy 1. And we, uh, when we do this, we're going to have what? Well, the square root of d times the square root of d is going to be the square root of d squared or d. And then, of course, we're going to have a d cubed times the square root of d. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so here is where we're at. We have the square root of d times the square root of d is going to be d, right? So this is going to be the square root of d squared or d. And then we have d cubed times the square root of d. And here now we can cross cancel a d because d cubed is the same thing as d times d times d. Then we have a d right down here in the denominator. So we can cancel 1d to 1d. So it leaves it with uh, d times d, which is d squared. Boy, that's a lot of d's uh, to say in this particular problem. But uh, here is the final answer, d squared times the square root of d. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Now, a uh, good kind of... Um, takeaway from this video is when you're looking at a situation in algebra, okay, so the, obviously the original problem was d cubed over the square root of d. If you're like a little bit confused about it, see if you can find or remember a more basic um, problem uh, with numbers. Here we have variables. So if you kind of think about what to do in this situation, that's going to help you kind of figure out, oh, the proper kind of strategy to simplify this. But this 
uh, rationalizing uh, square roots in the denominator. This is a big deal in algebra. And hopefully this video helps you out. If you want to know more about this stuff, uh, check out my full Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. That will definitely help you out. And I'll, uh, also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel about everything algebra as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.